There is a newly discovered Linux backdoor, and in this video, I'm going to actually discuss the code that hackers could have used to create this Linux backdoor. Disclaimer, do not use the information in this video illegally or unethically. So without further ado, let's go into it. We're going dark. Bootkitty is the first UEFI bootkit specifically designed to target Linux systems. This proof of concept malware marks a significant shift in the UEFI threat landscape, which previously focused exclusively on Windows. Now, the key features and limitations is first, Bootkitty targets specific Ubuntu Linux systems. Second, Bootkitty signed with a self signed certificate ineffective on systems with UEFI you know secure boot enabled now hackers could have created self-signed certificates in linux by creating a digital certificate that is signed by its own private key rather than a trusted certificate authority ca now here's how the process works works right generate a private key using open ssl peter please put that code on the screen for the viewers also hit that subscribe button hit that subscribe button hit that subscribe button two they created a certificate signing request peter put that code on the screen for them in this case, you'll be prompted to enter information such as the country, state, organization, and common name. Then they generated the self-signed certificate. Peter, put that code on the screen, please. Right? That's that open SSL code. Now, with that being said, in that case, right, this creates a certificate valid for 365 days. Or they can simply use this open SSL command right here. This this one, you can bypass all those steps and just put one, one command in opus and uh, open SSL just right there, right? Now, after they did all that hoopla, the third third thing, right, the hackers bypass Linux kernel security measures by modifying integrity verification and preloading unknown ELF binaries. Now, in regards to modifying integrity verification, to modify integrity verification, there's the remeasurement, right? Enable I underscore version on the file system to allow remeasurement of changed files. There's the IMA appraisal, enable local integrity you know, validation by booting with the IMA. Peter, you can put that on the screen and Peter, you can put that on the screen. Relabeling the file system, you can reboot with the Peter, put that code on the screen. Now, custom policies, apply custom policies to change IMA's behavior for measuring files. Now, package verification, you know, use, you know, package manager specific, you know, tools like RPMV for Fedora based systems and, you know, to verify installed files. Now you can also use third party tools, right? Implement, uh, you can implement additional integ uh, integrity checking using tools like tripwire in regards to preloading unknown e ELF binaries, right? The, the hackers did this. The hackers also, you know, they use the LD underscore preload to set the LD underscore preload environment variable to, you know, the path of the ELF binary they want to preload now this method injects the specific the specified shared library into you know a program before it starts now modifying the init process as demonstrated by the boot kitty malware it's possible to preload elf binaries by modifying the linux init process which is the first process executed by the kernel during system startup now the custom elf loader implement a custom elf loader in this you know in c that can load and execute elf binaries in user mode this involves parsing the ELF header, loading program segments into memory and handling relocations. Now, fourth, it contains hard coded patterns for kernel versions, limiting its functionality to specific setups. Now the functionality, Boot Kitty operates by hooking UEFI security authentication protocols to bypass secure boot checks, right? On some systems, hackers use, or they could have used Moku Util to disable secure boot validation using the command Peter, put that code on the screen. Then manipulating grub functions to disable signature verification to manipulate the grub function to disable signature verifications, hackers could have used this. Peter, put that code on the screen. Next, intercepting the Linux kernel's decompression process, hackers could have used these steps. Six steps, right? Step one, enable the config debug in the kernel configuration to allow low level debugging output through the UART console. Step two, set up the correct debug UART fizz, right? Definition to specify the physical address of the UART IO area. Step three, enable config debug uCompress, which will print uncompressing Linux before decompression and done booting the kernel after decompression. Step four, you know, for more detailed debugging, enable the deep, you know, the debug define and arc, you know, the arm, the boot compress head dot S by 
adding the DD, you know, bug to the a flags assembler flags for the head.s in the make file step five, modify the decompression code in the boot compress, you know, misc.c specifically the decompress function to add your custom interception logic. Step six, if you need to intercept system calls during the decompression process, you can, you know, hackers could have used techniques like the EB. PF programs or kernel you know, modules. Now, replacing the first environment variable to inject malicious library into processes, hackers could have done this using the export command. Peter put that code on the screen. And then the export pa the path, Peter put that code on the screen to verify it, right? Uh, you know, and, and you know, they could have also used the echo path file there. So that is what I have today. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. See you in the next video.